So, again, bomb the insides, wake up in the morning, get my stainer, make a mix, mm. get the ink, yeah? So, we used to have the, I don't know, Inferno, get the ink, the Inferno. We used to go down to Holborn to get some fibbins and some Quario and all these inks, brake fluid, nail polish remover, making this ink curry powder, bro. Really? Yeah, man, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Grandma's ashes, chuck them in. Killer <laughs> Killer KillerKillerOfficial.com Street Culture TV Instagram UK Frontline Beatbox created Killer Killer And we need to talk about world music and street culture Killer Killer Podcast <laughs> yeah, uh, Killer Killer Podcast, live and direct, central London, as central as you need to be, choose to be, want to be, you don't want to be anywhere else. Um, big shout out to all the shows and carers, people that have been following us from the very beginning, early doors, oh, tight you, early adopters you, house sponsors the mighty GK Nifty Heads have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets, just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hot Awards Summer 2024, big shout out to everyone that's got the television app iPhone, Android, free download for all your street culture sports and then some. Um, <clears throat> we have a gentleman inside the house, North Wheezy stand up from the golden era, you understand? The UK, London golden era of early noughties. He's been about for a bit, he's been tried for all of his uh, crimes and he's here to have a good chat with us. The man, the myth, he goes by the name of Titch. Yes, my brother, <laughs> what are you saying, man? You good, yeah? Yeah, I'm good, how are yeah, you? Yeah, bless, bro, bless. Thanks yeah, for coming through, bruv. Where have you travelled down uh, from today? North, up north, Midlands, bro. East Midlands. You're Midlands yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. A place called uh, Peak District. Oh. Yeah, yeah. The Peak District. The Peak District. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You ain't getting on Peakland down here, though. <laughs> <laughs> mm. you know, the Buxton Water, you know that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm. I mean, this is the clean living now, huh? Yeah, man. Of course, 100%. Where did that come from? How come, why did you make the, sh- make the shift? Oh, bro, like, when you've been in London for so long... Yeah. And you experience one way of living, especially mm. like you know northwest around here, mm. and you're and you're living a, in a certain mode for for all of your life, and mm. it's you it's only right to give yourself justice and try something different, you know. Yeah, and that's and, right. and move out of of the noise mm. into some clearer space and get some clarity. What's the what's the uh, what's the you know because yeah the idea I was just saying about my eventual move and, and it's like oh like that's there's a lot. of History, a lot of baggage, a lot of life, a lot of things that have gone on. Because life is about many lives. And, and you want to kind of move, but at the same time, you, there's certain roots that you have. That 100%. Nostalgia. 100%. Man, huh? I've, got, look, I've got London tattooed on my wrist. Yeah. Know? So everywhere I go, that's with me. Yeah. Like, you know, in, in, my, in my, my blood, it's, it's with me. Mm. Everywhere I go, I'm taking London with me. Mm. People are getting that where I'm living. Mm. Like, how can you not? Do you know what I mean? Even the way I'm talking, the way I'm moving. Mm. That's, that's London's built that, you know? So, yeah. so I'm proud to carry that. I'm proud yeah. to carry those memories. I'm proud to carry those experiences. I'm proud to bring that, my being into a new place. Why yeah. not, man? Yeah, I love that. Uh, why not? And with no fear. Like when I was in London, the London mindset is like, oh, there ain't no, there ain't no world outside of London. Mm. When you step out there, it's like, whoa, fucking hell. There's loads going on out there, man. What was the first thing that captured you from, you know, leaving, you know, your de- departure from London? What was the first you know thing that really caught you? Like London was a real struggle for me. Like, um, later. Uh, coming towards my 20s, 25s, that kind of age there. Mm. Um, there was a lot of memories here. There was a lot of trauma here. There was a lot of, you know how it is growing up and you're, you, you move in certain, certain circles, you see a lot of things. You, you get exposed to things that your normal human isn't supposed to be exposed to. Mm. You know what I mean? You see people, well, I won't get into the ins and outs, but you see a lot. And then, you know, I started going, for, actually what initially in, initially was, I was going out to the country, like not even far from here, Chilton Hills, mm-hmm. Buckinghamshire, just going on like walks, sitting down in the forest alone, spending time there, um, understanding for the first time since I was a child what feeling a bit of peace. Mm. I thought, wow, this is powerful, you know what I mean? So, mm. and coming back to London, it's like, all oh, right, <laughs> I've not been able to sustain that peace. Mm. Like, it's obviously different now, but when I'm coming back, I'm like, oh, this, this is just a rat race, man. This is yeah. crazy. Things going on there, things going on there. I need to detach to, to really get some clarity to reassess, and that's when I could, I was able to. So I kept going back to these quiet places, mm. and then that's it. Decided, boom, it's time to make a move, man. Rat race, see, see terminology like that. That like, 
it's so identifiable for anyone that's living in cities where well, it doesn't necessarily have to be London. But uh, yeah, it's just this assimilating, just having to do things all the time, justifying your whole existence. Seven pound the moment you step outside the Boom, door for yeah. something. Oh my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you know what? The rat, race, the rat race doesn't stop wherever mm. you go. And, you, and one thing I learned from moving out from London is that actually you can't run away from yourself. At some point, you'll have to confront yourself and, mm. and all that you've been through and all that you've, mm. you've done, you know mm. what I mean? And accept and let go and, and, and crack on and expand, bro. Mm. You know? Graffiti is a, is a vessel for, yeah, things you need to let go, the, the <sighs> kind of stuff that only, you know, only being on the ground you see. <sighs> Graffiti is like a yin and yang. It's mm. like a positive and negative at the same <laughs> time. Like, you know, if we didn't have graffiti growing up, and I, I, mean, I speak for a lot of graffiti artists in my era when I'm, when I'm saying this, I'm sure, it's like, if we didn't have graffiti as an outlet, as a channel, then we were doing, we were, I certainly would be doing far more madness than I was already doing anyway. Mm. So graffiti was just one of them ways to a healthy escape, if you like. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, this is my escape, this is my drug. Mm -hmm. That was my shit right there. Do you know, literally, that was yeah, my yeah, shit yeah, right, yeah, right yeah, there, yeah. man. Like, if I'm going, I'm, I'm going into a train yard and I'm painting a panel and I'm battering it, bomber. I'm not an artist, but I'm a bomber. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And that's the mindset I've always had. If I'm bombing that whole train, I'm going home and, and I've got that, that feeling. It's like, ooh. No one's even got to see that. Mm -hmm. No one's even got to see that. But what I've done, for me, it felt like, it's a, again, I, like I said, it's a drug. I can't describe that feeling. Oh, you know? this is going to be a good podcast, boy. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, wow. At this point, I might add, do not try this shit at home, all right? Stuff will kill you, you know. <laughs> we do not condone any of it. It's a nice little story. Cowboys and Indians, <laughs> uh, cops and robbers and stuff like that. Um, well, let's get into it. So how old were you when you got into the game? So listen, I was um, in high school, I was graphing, but right. I weren't really into graph. Like, I, was, I don't even know where it can come from. I just started writing check, C-H-E-K. <laughs> and I was just writing that on around school. No one else was graphing. I just come up with this. And, mm. and that was uh, instinctively. Wow. I was like, okay. Obviously got in a bit of trouble for that. I got Saturday inclusion, suspended and all that kind of stuff for writing. <laughs> <laughs> that continued, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then when I started to get a bit older, I started to explore it a little bit. And, you know, I, 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 I met people in the ends and they were doing this thing called graffiti but like on a proper level, like actually fucking painting, hitting trains. Mm. I was like, shit, man, this is mad. And like, you know, got their stainers out. The stainer was a, was a thing. It wasn't even about spray paint at first. It was about stain and ink, mm -hmm. walking around with ink and, and going on the inside of trains. And well, at the age of 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, them kind of years there, 21, 22, just going in and just riding the lines and just bombing it and bombing it. Like... Crazy. So it was more about the stain, it's more about the insides, more about the the yeah. damage. What we used to do, man, we used to wake up in the morning. It was uh, the time me, props, and sucker. Um, wake up in the morning, go on the Northern line or the Met line or the Bakerloo line, because they all ran through Northwest and North, you know what I mean? Just pick one line that day, Northern line, boom, go to Edgware, jump on the train, ride it to Burnt Oak, ride it to Collindale, ride it to Hendon, bombing it, bombing it, bombing it, walking through the carriages. Jumping off, jumping on the one back, bombing it, bombing it, bombing it, bombing it, jumping it, jumping on the way back. back. Backwards and forwards. Beautiful man. era of, of Northern day. Lines by that. All day. Beautiful. All day. All day long. We, we don't care. We didn't care. We didn't care, man. Like, I, don't know, I don't think many people, they weren't really hot on it back then. You know yeah. what I mean? You can just bomb it and then whatever. There was no cameras in the Northerns back mm. then. And again, it wasn't so much for, it was for your personal yeah, enjoyment. Man. You and your friends. Yeah, of course. This was like, I mean, come on, like, Who's going to see my shit apart from a handful of people that recognise what they're... Like, okay, titch, titch, titch. I mean, the, the, the per person of the public are going to see that. They're not going to... Well, they're subconsciously or they will go into them, but it's like, they're not saying, oh, titch, I see you up. Mm. Don't get me wrong, there's a handful of people within London that would, yes, titch, I see you mm -hmm. up. Yeah, boom, carry, carry on, carry on. But that, it wasn't even about that. It was about the feeling when you're doing it and the feeling actually for the ego mm. when you're... You're, you're riding the lines and you're seeing, oh, I need to bomb this train, I'm jumping on it. Oh, I've already bombed it. <laughs> Do you know yeah, what I mean? I've yeah. already bombed it. Let me jump off or jump on the next carriage and bomb that carriage. Or let me jump on the, the back of the train and surf it and paint the back of the train. Or some madness. You used to like do that. that? Yeah, man, we should ride, ride the back of the train. Avia put me onto that. <laughs> big up, big up, Avia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was the first guy that, that I saw doing that. I was like, right. Oh. Avia, OPEC, AS on the Bay Calus, 
Crazy. Hanging on, like, got spray paint in one hand, shh, both, like, three men on the back. It's like, oh, my God, like, what's going on here? What? Yeah, man. One guy put in the horn, beep, beep. Stop <laughs> yeah, it I off. Swear I swear down. We, and, then, and then once we got to the stage, sometimes we just jump off onto the platform, we'll just walk into the carriage, and people are like, who are these guys? <laughs> what? That's crazy. And then we just carry on bombing the train sometimes. Like, this is how mad it was. Like, people, one or two people clocked us, fine, carry, carry on. Mm. What are they going to do? Yeah, yeah. You know? It was just immortal, complete, utter, no fucks given. Yes, 100%. Where did that mentality come from? Oh, boy, I don't know, man. It was... I don't know, bro. Really? It's fire, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's youthful wisdom, right? It's fire, it's, man. It, mm. It's like, it's fire, man. And I've still got that. Really? Uh, but, but you got in different ways. I construct that. I, got, I use that energy in a con mm. more constructive ways that are helpful to me and my people around me, you know? Yeah, yeah. That are going to bring them up and elevate. So who was... Um, we'll get into that later. Who... So who were your influences? Who are the people that... that right. at the time? Because, you know, let's, let's, let's talk on the era. Let's talk on yeah, the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so coming up, it was like... I swear down, like... And he's... I don't, he don't really write no more, but... The tag that got me hooked was Scan. Scan. You remember? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Scan, yeah, yeah. Faze. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Anchor as well. Yeah, yeah, wicked. All these boys in North of Wills. Big up Meezy, by the way, because we, we do talk on highly on Scan, yeah. Like, I yeah. mean, fire, man. Yeah. Like, simple London-style yeah. gritty letters. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And that's it, you know? And, like, there's no, like, pretense. There's no nothing. It's, you, what you see is what you yeah, get. Yeah. Boom. And I was just like, that was my inspiration, man. Mm. That was just like, when it come... It doesn't even matter about the person writing the tag. Mm. It's about the tag that I'm seeing. And it's just like, this shit is hot. Yeah. And then, and then there was like LGL, then there was who else was I seeing a lot at the time? Zonk. Zonk, yeah, of course. Zonk and wow. um, Bosch and mm. Sub and all mm. these kind of guys in, in North London and Northwest. And yeah, man, it was, uh, there were some mad, mad influences. Yeah, some, glorious. Yeah, man. It was just, yeah, it was mad. Yeah, Northwest has always bred, bred some uh, yeah. heavy hitters, right? To you, yeah, to you, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, rest in peace, tees. We were only talking about tees, yeah, man. At the time. Yeah, yeah, and again, another guy we used to bump into on the Northerns, all yeah. the, like all the time. Yeah, yeah, and you know, it was all, it was like, it was all, it was always love. Mm. It was always love yeah. even back then. You know what I mean? When you're bumping into these right, not all the time. Don't get me twisted. Yeah. But with, with tees and Odia and mm. um, Welsh and West, the guys we used to bump into the Northerns, it was it was always love, man. Oh, that's so sick. That's mm. so sick. So the bug got you. And you're off to the races. Yes. Every night? Every other night, man. Oh, really? But if it weren't that or something else. Really? Like, we've gone out there as well. So, yeah, you know, well, we're raising. Raising, going out there, raising, painting. You know, you wake up in the morning, how am I going, how am I going to get some money? Uh, how am I going to get some paint? How am I going to get a draw? Mm. Those are the three things, money, draw, and paint. Not a bad way to live, is it? <laughs> <laughs> some people still stand by that. Yeah, yeah I know. Moral I know. compass of I know, I know. supplies. I know, but then, but then you're kind of, you're, you're, you know, the way you're moving, you're not paying for paint. You're not paying for paint at all. You're going, again, Avery and them, them guys there, they put me onto some good spots. You go out, they get a train out there, and you to just fill up. Fill up. All your paint. And then even if you don't have no money, you've got paint. Mm. So you're going to satisfy yourself because you're going you're gonna to alleviate that, that thing that, that needs filling at that moment. So I'm using graph to do that. Uh, you know? Explain that a bit more. So it's like... The graph felt, filled a void. It was like an escapism. It made you satisfied. Mm. It made me satisfied. When I, when I was painting, when I was getting up and I was painting, I, I, that was like, I've, I've, done, done some, I've done some stuff today. Mm. I'm going to sit down and chill now. Fulfillment. <laughs> Fulfillment. Boom, that's the word. Really? That's the word. Yeah, that's yeah. incredible. Okay, so talk to me through a day in the life of Titch. I mean, we're talking about a lot of heavy hitters, like, you know, Avia being one of them. You know, you also mentioned painting with Zombie and Elk and yeah, so there, doing whole cars. There was a whole car one time. Um, who was there? It was like, we were, I was parked up in my car. There was another car. And there was another car with me, Zelda. <laughs> I don't know if you remember Zelda. <laughs> Zelda, oh, OG, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zelda, where are you? Come on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Uh, I think Band was there. Elk was nice. there. Zombie was there. Me Rock. Big up Band, yes. Um... Futa, Credit. Nice. Um, there was a whole bag of people. Yo. It just all came together. Like, it wasn't even, I don't even know what was going on. It was a whole car, end to end. Not top to bottom, but end to end. Wow. The whole thing was, had things on it, dubs, pieces, everything. I had no paint that day. Honestly, I had half a chrome. If you see my panel that day, it was a titch and <laughs> mm -hmm. a blockbuster TICH and half the, half the dub wasn't even filled in. 
No matter, it didn't matter though. You know no, no, I mean? no, no. Who's this fucking car? You know, you're up. You're it didn't out. matter, man. So again, these were these were I mean these guys these guys yeah, you're right, heavy hitters, man. These mm. these guys again were inspiring to us when you're seeing these guys doing their work and it's like, oh boom, man, like this is sick. You know, I'm mm. playing alongside a lot of people that I know and I'm playing alongside a lot of my influences mm. and a lot of playing a lot of the sides that I've grew up like watching and them develop as well and like mm. you know, it's it's just it's just sick. Sick it is. Go on then. A day in the life. A day in the life. A day in the life. Come on. Boom. Okay. At peak, at peak titchism. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Whew. So, again, bomb the insides. Wake up in the morning. Get my stainer. Make a mix. Mm. Get the ink, yeah? So, we used to have the, I don't know, Inferno. Get the ink, the Inferno. We used to go down to Holborn to get some fibbins and some quarrier and all these inks. Brake fluid. Nail polish remover. Making this ink. Curry powder, bro. Really? Yeah, man, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Grandma's ashes, chuck them in. <laughs> <laughs> Turmeric, everything, all of it. Wow. Why not, man, why not? Yeah. And, then, and then we had, so we had like two litres, bro, like of, of stain. Oh, wow. Two litres of stain. And then we had to go out, put that in our bags. We're out all day. I had a 50 mil, a 30 mil. I remember Pops, he had a 30 mil sucker. He had his pens. And then um, ride the lines, met line. And then... We used to ride it out there, do, do some back jumps. I don't know if I can, I'm not even going to name spots, just in case people are hot, you know what I mean? But we used to just go out to these spots, you know, Northern Line spots, and just hit these back jumps, just chill in the bushes all day as well. Like, so we hit the insides. Everywhere we were traveling to, we were battering it, jumping off the train, jumping in the bushes where the trains are laying up, staying there for a couple of hours. No one's clocking, clocking us. Really? Just going there. I mean, so what do you do in a couple of hours? Like, you smoke weed. I was smoking, bro. Like, just talking, smoking, chilling, cracking joke. Really? You know? Yeah. You just like, just, just getting buzzed. Do you know what I mean? Really? And yeah, man, S- smoking. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not, I couldn't but smoke. just living enough, know that the trains are there, and it's just, just you know, the trains are going to keep coming. You paint one train, and then the train's going to come. <laughs> Let the one goes and it comes, so and then intriguing you run mindset. off, and then it's like, oh, maybe I can do like on this next one. Maybe I can. I've done a dub on the last one. Maybe I can do a piece on this one. Mm. Or maybe I can do this or, you know. And then sometimes we'll jump, jump on it, get off the next station where it's opening, the doors are opening on the side that we've painted so we can catch the runner. Wow, you know? yeah. And then, and then we're going through and then we're, you know, constantly blazing through the day and, and, what, and whatnot, riding the lines, trying to avoid people that are going to try and rob us because that was happening as well. Really? You know, when you're riding the lines back yeah. in those days, it was like... There was a, you're going to bump into other writers because that was the way it was back then. Not like now. Back then it was just like, uh, we're going to bump into this writer, we're going to bump into that writer. Mm-hmm. I remember I was saying, some people are going to try and rob me. I've got paint on me, I've got ink yeah. on me, I've got draw on me, you know what I mean? And that was a real, that was a real thing. Really? Like, yeah, that, man. that happened a lot as well? Yeah, it happened, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're trying to avoid all that as well. And then, and come night time, come on, what yard are we going to do? Mm. What depot are we going to What train yard? You know, who's got the bodies? <laughs> Dude, it's just, it sounds so romantic. Even if we, even if we don't, didn't have any bolties, fuck it, we'll just walk into the yard. How old have you been at that time? So, well, I'm trying to think. The first time I got a bag was 2002, so I'm 38 now, 1985, so what's that? 18, 19? 18, 19. 18, yeah. 17, 18, yeah. I mean, you got bagged in such a royal way. It was on TV and everything, I know, right? I know, I know. But I mean, this is some little known facts, or maybe it's widely known facts, but it's, you know, it's hard to reach video, but we, we, I've seen it. <laughs> it's crazy that, you know, they literally had the TV cameras all on you. Explain yeah. that scenario. Well, it was mad. It was actually mad, thinking back at it, yeah. Like, I knew it was coming. I was going on bait. I was just going on raggo. So it wasn't even a thing where mm. I'm, I'm trying to escape getting caught. It was a thing where... When is this going to happen? <clears throat> if it's when. Mm. When, is, when is it? And so we was painting out last night, doing a track side up, out, out at Venn's and Hatch End somewhere. Um, I remember I did a big Titch blockbuster that night, TRC blockbuster, mm. Titch. And then I went back home, slept. Five in the morning. Must have been like five in the morning. It was summertime as well. Six in the morning, so it was light. Mm. And I heard a knock on the door. I said, I know what this is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Who's coming knocking at five in the morning? Fuck. So, and I heard my mum open the door. And my mum was like, oh, come in. I was like, well, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the search warrant anyway. Mm. Come in. So two, two BTs, BTP come in into my room. I had a downstairs bedroom at the time. They come in and then I think, boom, BBC cameraman. Yeah. I was like, rah, what is this? And I'm in, I'm in bed. I'm in bed now. I'm like, I'm waking up and they're filming all this. It's one thing being, you know, BTs coming in. <laughs> but there's another thing when you've got 
BBC coming <laughs> in. <laughs> so he's just there like, this isn't part of the, the thing no. that we're bagging. No, no, no. You know what it was? Is is This was the time when they were they were, were clamping down massively. Sucker got done just before me. Right. Uh, I think he got, I don't know if he went pen or what, I think he got a year or something like that. Or he flew off to Ireland to try and escape it, but I think it caught up with him. Right. I, think, I think he did go pen, I can't remember. But And then they thought, let's make an example out of everyone doing this thing. Mm. And then they came in, cameraman, and they were like, okay, we're arresting you uh, on suspicion of criminal damage by this many counts or whatever. Mm. And boom, what they found was a pack of photos like that, a stack of photos like that. What, in your, in your bedroom? Yeah, yeah, in my bedroom. Oh, a stack of photos, all my work. Yeah, they'll, they'll do it. <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, not guilty ain't going to slide on no. that one, you know what I mean? So I was like, yeah, take me. Bam, you got me. Ink, photos, bit of weed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, a, a undeveloped camera. Yeah. Um, and cans. Cans, and everything. Well, yeah. And what they said was, I don't know if this is true because who knows, isn't it? But there was a, they found a, a f- someone else's phone that had my name stored as Titch under, under, under the name. No, you can't let that, well, yeah, it yeah. is what it is. It is right? what it is, could have been a snitch, could have been anything, who yeah. knows? But, you know, I got bad either way. Mm. Uh, so what did you get in the end? What, so, what was uh, the... A couple, uh, so I swear I must have been one of the first guys to get a 10-year ASBO. Wow. So 10 year Asbo, not to carry. Oh, 10 man, year Asbo. 10 year Asbo. I think, it, I think it was me and Tox oh. were the first guys to get that. Jeez. Um, to not carry paint or spray paint or paint articles or pens or anything like that for 10 years. What? And then I got a few years in pen, uh, a few months in pen. So 18 uh, uh, at the time, felt them. Um, were you allowed to hang out with anybody in Graf? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, they, they, so couldn't, right. they, couldn't, they couldn't do that to me. Well, they, did, they didn't do that to me. It was just, I couldn't carry paint for. It was mad, even when I come out of jail like eight years later, I just got to paint it legal. I carry my paint for you then because I'm not getting shit and going to pen for breaching my ass, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you, know yeah, yeah. I mean? you will. Yeah. T- especially 10, ten, ten years. 10 year ASBO, so 2003 to Jeez. 2013. I know what, we're 10 years on from that now, 11 years on from that. So I've been allowed, legally allowed to carry spray paint for the last 11 years. That's <laughs> crazy. I ain't heard anything like that mad. before. Mad, mad, mad. Man, and I think the same thing was happening to, to kind of Tox. Was, I think he had the same kind of thing happen to him as well. Yeah. Or we were the first ones to receive that 10 years, bro, man. Wow. You know um, that it begs belief. I mean, obviously, you didn't, you didn't touch any paint for 10 years, but that must have been impossible. That must have been, like, so hard. Yeah, man. Like, I couldn't even, I couldn't even go... If I wanted to paint my bedroom, I'm getting shifted. If, so if please stop me, we'd paint in the car. Any paint? <laughs> any paint. Markers? <laughs> Anything. Anything. Not, not like... Colouring pencils and that, yeah, but yeah. like you know, markers, etching equipment, uh, paint articles. They said anything like that, paint brushes, anything. Really? Mad. Caps, anything? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I didn't say anything specific about caps, but I did get shifted once for breaching it. Really? And I was driving through uh, around Q. Yeah. You remember those kind of southwest and those yeah. kind of ends there? Um, I wasn't even painting. I was painting illegal, and I and I got stopped in my in my bait car, which is a just a black window clear, a black towel anyway. So they're going to stop me anyway. They stopped me, found paint, boom, sh- arrested me. I can't remember what happened. I, I, I went pen a few times for Graf, so it might have been a breach. I might have been pen for that okay. as well. Really? Um, so yeah, man. It's, I'm glad I don't have that asthma no more. Yeah, fucking right. <laughs> fucking salute that. Yeah. Occupational hazards are these for a writer, right? Yeah, bro. It's hurdles, mate. Yeah, yeah. Hurdles. I hear, I hear that uh, holiday camp ain't much to be desired for either. You, know, you get in there a couple of times and, yeah, you, know, you hear some mad stories about being inside. There was people doing a couple of years, man, for Graf. Yeah. I yeah. was one of the fortunate ones. Every time I was getting shifted, I was only getting a few months. For, Isn't that crazy that people mad. were getting done like that? It's mad. It's mad. It's crazy to think. It's mad. It's the financial damage they, they, they set it by, isn't it? So Yeah. You know, I, they, they kind of gave me a blind away because the first time I got shifted, I had 15 charges of Graf. But they had a big, they had a, a bag of shit on me. Really? So what they did was, oh, your, all your extra damage is to be taken in consideration, like as mm-hmm. an extra, not not charges. So they didn't drag it on. They just, they just. I was in bail for uh, a year, so mm. I couldn't carry spray paint for a year anyway, and I couldn't, I couldn't. Well, my bail conditions were not to enter. I could go on the train, mm. but I couldn't enter depot. Right. I couldn't go on train tracks. You couldn't anyway. But if they right. caught me on train tracks, straight to pen. Often, you know. Um. But. Writing's a lifestyle, all your friends do it. It's something that you build up a tolerance for. 
You know what I mean? Your stamina, you're built for doing that thing and it's a lot of fun. And then, you know, it's like moving a limb. If it, you know, you're being told you can't do it. What, what's the first thing you... How did you cope with that in the first initial... <sighs> well, I'm like a rebel, man. Mm. Like, you tell me something, I do the opposite, man. Mm. You tell me I can't do something, I'm mm. going to try to do it, man. Mm. Because... You can't tell me nothing. Like so, I was carrying. I was carrying on. It, it, they weren't going to define or tell me what I should be doing with my mm. life. Mm. It, really, even if it is damaging their property, mm. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Go around outside. You see marketing all over the place. Mm. What's wrong with my tag? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a, that that's is the, the theory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So do you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't that that's, that 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 calmed me down. I went to pen and I kept doing it. Mm. Pen did not calm me down. It didn't it didn't calm work. down. I went to pen again and didn't, didn't stop doing it. I went to pen again. It was it was just my life circumstances, my life. Yeah. that I decided, you know what, maybe I should start doing something different or, or, or come out of this a little bit because, well, I had a, I had a child. Yeah. My child came along. I thought, oh, let me, I need to focus on this. That's cool. So it wasn't, they didn't dictate to me, like, yeah. because of the, the restrictions they imposed on me that you're going you're gonna to abide by this because yeah. I didn't. Yeah. You know, but other, other life situations, I, I, I decided. Yeah, yeah. You know? Give some stories. Give us some <sighs> stories. Jeez. So, they're here. The <laughs> stories are coming. <laughs> you want graph or what? Yeah, mate. All right, cool, Let's cool. go. Uh, get, uh, do you know what? I got, I got one for you. And this, I could have died here, you know, Uh-oh. because Watford Junction, me and Pops again, back in the earlier days, uh, walking up, eight o'clock in the evening, we were painting a, a train wow. in the station. Eight o'clock in the evening. Wow. Like, not in the station, but there was a siding, that there was yeah. a train there. Yeah. So we were going up one side, crawling, crawling, crawling. And it's like, we need to go cross like 10 sets of tracks what? to get to this train on the side. Yeah. Thinking about it now, why the hell didn't we just go on that side? I don't know. But yeah, yeah. So anyway, we're laying down, right in the station, waiting for it to be clear, waiting for, waiting for the cross, <laughs> laying down now. Um, just chilling, waiting for it to be clear. And I must have laid my, this is mad, like, I laid my head on the, the, the rail. Huh? I accidentally put my head on the rail and it got jolted. What? Mad, isn't it? And luckily, I was like, and I said to Pops, did you feel that, bro? And he was just like, no, what? And I was like, I've just been jolted, bro, by the, the, the third rail. And I'm thinking, and looking back at it now, I was like, that was a, that could have, I could have died right there. Right there and then. Right there and then I, I could be dead. And then like, that shook me back and I was like, fucking hell, my body was like, I, it, didn't, it didn't electrify me, but it, 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 it pushed me away. Like, boom. And I was like, my, and I was on just like, head. on my head. Like, I must have been like, because the rail was here, innit? And I was laying down. And I was just like, I don't know what happened. I don't know if I moved my head like that or it got it too close. Got too close, basically. And that was enough to tell me, don't fuck about with this, man. No. Don't fuck about with this. Um, uh, we, carried, we carried on with the mission. But Don't still, get twisted. Carried on with the mission. We, we crossed, um, we crossed the tracks, and then and then we we painted, and then we went away. But you know, you know, there's stories. I used to hear stories back in the day of of all sorts of things. Like I don't know if you remember three twenty. Three twenty, yeah, yeah, yeah. About him, he he he. he Saw one guy getting electrocuted and knocked him off with a, a bit of wood and all sorts, man. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That happened. Yeah, man. We were. We used to, this was, we, I mean, writers die, you know what I mean? And they have, sadly. Yeah. Like, from, from actually writing in the process of, of doing the graph. See, I'm telling you people, don't be doing this mm. wherever you are. <laughs> yeah, man. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, all those yard missions and, and, and everything, piecing the inside of trains. Piecing inside? Piecing the inside of trains, <laughs> full of people, <laughs> pulling out tins. Really? Coloured, full colour. You don't get no superheroes? No one stepped up? Uh, I mean, we, we rode a train once from, from Watford, met the fast train to Baker Street. I think it was the, uh, was it the Amersham one, or one of those. Mm-mm. And it was full of students, kids, school kids. Oh, <laughs> and it's yeah. like, come they would have loved that shit. They would have loved that. We just ripped out, like, well, gassed up. Like, oh my God. Paint everywhere, fumes everywhere. I right, open the windows, boys. <laughs> really? And they <laughs> yeah. were just like, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then start doing this piece. It's like, can't do that now. No, you can't do that now. Um, 
Or could, could you? I don't know. Do people do that know, now? Know, comment below. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know what do you mean. I'm a, I'm a mere conduit, you understand. We've, uh, we've, we've had some mad missions, man. And then, and then after those days, you know, came the HTB days. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, hide the burner. Mm-hmm. You know, like man like Sema, Nums. Come on. Pops again. Yeah. Fee and, and, and Nemis and all them. And then we used to go out and just do silly missions drunk. Drunk and fucked up. And again, we got shifted again. That gets more dangerous, doesn't it? Like, the amount of... Because, you know, if, if you were the, you know, jolly bunch of pirates, drunk and just on one. Happy-go-lucky, man. Yeah, it is. You know what I mean? It's like less fucks you give, right? Of course. And you're already at that point where you're not giving a fuck anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're reckless. You're reckless. Whoa. You're reckless, man. Dangerous is a crew like that. To be, you know, you yeah. crossing on the street or anything. And that's like a... Would you say? Say that again. You know, to not to be crossed in the street, kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, dangerous. Yeah. What, a crew like that? Yeah. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, we, we <laughs> graph was a mad game because you, you, you weren't just graphing, you were hungry for You were just hungry. You were hungry for, again, to fulfil that kind of, that you want that satisfaction, you want that fulfilment. And that could be from, 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 you know, doing a couple of movements, rubbing something or, yeah. you know, painting something and accumulating something mm. and, and, and you're on top of the world. Yeah. You think with the f- bollocks. Yeah. Just because you've done this little thing. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? And then, and then, yeah, you think you're the bollocks. And in that moment you are. Yeah. In that moment you are. When you're painting that train, for example, or you've broken into a, a, a train, I remember the one in the Northern who used to, you know, you to, you to kind of go through a tennis court mm-hmm. uh, and then you had to kind of, you get the bolties and you go, you're snipping it, and it's so loud, <laughs> like so loud, and you've got a sense of running, through, running along the thing. I remember actually one mission in this yard, I was actually there with Tox, actually, mm-hmm. funny enough, talking about Tox, and his, he, was, he was up there, he, he was an inspiration as well, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah, I mean? yeah just yeah, straight, yeah. boom, boom, yeah, yeah. boom, boom, oh, two, oh, He gets three. sighted, you know, big up Tox, he gets sighted on the show all, all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah, yeah. He, you know, he was doing his thing, and, and we used to love, I used to love what he was doing. Mm-hmm. And then he was coming, and then we'd go, and you know, you're waiting for the trains to make the noises, like, and this particular mission, you're waiting for the trains to make the noises. Gang, gang, go quick, yeah. Gang, gang, quick. But it's hard, bro, like, especially when it's double fenced, because yeah. there's so many people that cut through that same hole. Yeah. And then you've got the siding, and then you've got the, you're watching the SG come around, and you're watching the SG go. I mean, more time than none, we, we were successful. Yeah. More time than none, we painted our thing and, and cut. Yeah. You know, uh, sometimes the SG come around and, you know, we we didn't succeed in that mm. in that mission, but that's cool. That's cool. Oh, you do, do, don't it get your anxieties up now when you think about it, or does it make you want to do it like more? Jeez, oh, that's a question, isn't it? Yeah, that's a question, isn't it? Listen, I I, I look at graph like these days. I'm walking around and and it's changed, man. Like, I I, I feel very lucky mm. to have been doing graph in that era. Yeah, yeah. Um and. You know, I think I was at the cusp of it. Yeah, yeah. Where it changed from being allowed to bomb trains yeah. to like, oh no, this is, this is mm. it's gonna get buffed. Mm. You know what I mean? And when I see graph nowadays and and the way people are getting up is digitally, bro. Yeah. And it's like, oh man, this is. I see things evolve. It's a different play, isn't it? It's a different, different play, yeah. and I, and I see the positives of it. Mm. And bro, I'm one of those writers now. Mm. I bro, back in the day. I used to say, I used to say, fuck legal writers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm allowed to swear on this, aren't I? Oh, it's your yeah, podcast, mate. <laughs> I used to say, fuck legal writer. Who does that? That's mm. not graph. Mm. St- and I kind of still stand by that. Mm. So I'm one of those guys that I was saying, <laughs> fuck legal writers. I'm not playing <laughs> no, no trains mm. now, no more. I'm not playing yeah. no tracks. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got, I've got kids to look after. Mm-hmm. I can't be going pen for that. Yeah. If I hit a titch blam, that's on their records. Yeah. You know. So, um, but I rate the man that are still doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I rate them. Because they're all out there, it. all active and, you know. I, I rate them. I rate them, man. They keep that shit yeah. moving because this new wave of graph, like I was, was talking earlier, gentrification of, of what we're seeing around here, it affects the subcultures. It does. As well. So it brings, it brings in a new wave of, of getting up, likes, and all this kind of stuff. Does it's it like, bring a new breed of writer, do you think? It, it does bring a new breed of writer mm. because you get people coming along who've never painted a panel in their life. Mm. And mm. they're like, ah, oh, and, they, and then it's, that ego is coming through the work that they're displaying on social, social media, media that they're yeah. getting attention for. Yeah, that's right. And it's like, okay, that's, that's kind of cool as well, but mm. it's, it's, it's not what I know mm. as graph to be. Yeah. Which, obviously, we were influenced by New York. Yeah. Subway, subway art. That's right. You know, we used to watch uh, videos like 
uh, what, what was that that famous New York one? I've just, it's come out my uh, head. Star Wars. Star Star Wars. We used yeah. to watch that. Yeah. Dirty Hands, the French one. Oh, all volumes. Love Dirty Hands. Dirty Hands Two. That <laughs> yeah, was the one. That was the one. We used to watch that before going on missions. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is fueling me up, and we're going out. I you remember DJ Vadin. Remember that one? I am a terrorist. Terrorist. T E R R. Yeah. And then, and then we're like, you know, if we're making moves, we're watching Scarface. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Let's watch this this crazy fucking guy just get snorted up and do this thing, and it's gonna fuel me up, and I'm gonna go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So one of the greatest films ever made. Oh, boom. Bad Easily. Bad man. Yeah, man. So you just used to get juiced up on all sorts of culture. All sorts we of were, pop trip. We were doing, yeah. yeah, man. Anything, like, we were all consumers. Mm. We were consumers, and, and through what we're consuming, through what we've been influenced mm. by, we were displaying that on our, on, on our, in our... Yeah, for sure. I also think, like, New York still holds a, a, a strong flame to, to what we're talking about of an era uh, that you, you came up through, Graf, because, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, comment below, I, I, I don't see the illegal New York graph writers posting half as much as the UK ones. I think there's a different penalty, uh, <laughs> a higher, higher, higher penalty for getting caught in New York. You mean the illegal writers? Yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, and this is what, this brings it back to the thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, what are you writing for? for? Exactly, that's the question. What are you writing mm. for? And, you know, if I, if I were to go paint a panel right now, it's like, it's for the love. Yeah. It's for the love. I don't care if no one sees that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, I might, I might take a picture and show my boys and might, oh, look, look at this. Yeah, and then they're like, yeah, yeah, sick. Well, you know what I mean? But yeah. it's for the, the, that, that buzz that you get when you go into a train yard mm. or, 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 you know, put paint to the outside of steel. What's that feeling when you do that? <sighs> Boy, it's like a, a adrenaline. It's like it's a drug. What's the smell like in there? What's, oh, what, what are you, the, come on, let's get into the, the sensory smell, The smell of the... the experience. The, 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 the kind of oily, steely thing mm. and then mixed with the Montanas and then mixed with the plastic coat, the wax oils. Mm. And you're smelling all that and it's hitting the steel and it's like you're inhaling them fumes and getting high as well. Oh. Do you know what I mean? So it's all, it all infuses, man. Yeah. You know what I mean, I've been painting just now not at Trellick. And I was painting, I was like... Oh, right. So yeah, I well, noticed your fingers were a yeah, bit well, yeah. glossy there. You can paint a wall with Task and Boff, so big up them. Yeah, big up Task, big up. But yeah, and also who else was there? Um, was Crept there? I see Crept there as big well. Big up Crept yeah, as yeah, well. CBM. You know what I mean? Yeah. All the writers are, you know, yeah. Trollic's still standing. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a lot of stuff with uh, moving forward uh, uh, like during those times with Essa as well. Yeah. Like, big up Essa, rest in peace Rest as in well. peace. Absolutely, like, rest he, in he peace. He was a massive inspiration for me. Yeah. Like, because he, his style was, was, was solid. Yeah. He had it on lock and he used to tattoo me. He'd done my TRC tattoo here. That's incredible. He'd done that. So, like, you know, I'd never go over that yeah. because, you know, he'd done that work. Yeah, he's, done a, he's done a KCD on my back. Man, that is incredible. He'd done a KCD on Killing Crews Daily, Kicking Cops to Death. He did that on yeah. my back in my flat in Wembley. So he come around DIY. We painted after that. That's amazing. And three hours him tattooing my back and it's like, boom, done, bro. Let's go. Oh, I mean. Yeah, rest in peace. You know what I mean? Talk. So it was, it was that kind of thing. It was there was no holes, there was no time, there was no routine. We were just fucking like the Wild West. Man. Yeah. You know, just doing what we want when we wanted, man. Yeah, so it's, that's, that's the youth in you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That freedom. Do you ever get that back? Oh, it's in me, man. Yeah. It's in me. I'm it's just, in you. I'm just channeling that energy in different ways, ways man. You know I mean? um, talk to me about the punk. Um, the punk in you. Oh. Because uh, cause TRC, uh, controversial initials, but it was a punk band. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it still is. Hardcore punk band. So, uh, and still is, yeah, to this day. So, the, out of the graph, which was started in a year after TRC, T I started creating TRC as a, as a crew, we start, I started a band. And then we started, oh, we st I was like, listen to that music. And there was a lot of writers that came out of that scene as well. Mm. Like LBU, mm -hmm. that was a crew, London Black Op. LBU and TRC, they were doing their thing. And then, we, I was shouting on a mic. Mm -hmm. You know, I had all this, this, this again that 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 London yeah. fuel of anger and 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 whatever it is, trauma in me. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is an outlet, like the graph. Mm. This is an outlet, the graph and the punk and the hardcore. Mm. And then, you know, we were playing shows. We were playing like Camden Underworld. We were playing like all over the UK. We were playing in Europe, touring and that. Fucking and great. It was lovely. And at the same time, what we were doing, we we're going to Europe. We we're painting trains as well. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yeah, bringing man. worlds together yes, 100%. around the world. I remember, playing, I remember <laughs> playing in Belgium. The hotel we, hotel we were staying at, uh, there was a train station opposite. There was there was trains laid up there. Just, I fucking oh. love. Yeah. I love the fact that you're a touring band and yet you and you're playing in Graf as well. 
oh, that's the mindset, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like we're looking for those opportunities that that we like. Yeah. And and uh, the band got big. I it took a direction that I weren't really feeling, so I left it. I carried on doing the thing and big up them guys. They made yeah. it into something nice, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm still connected to that music. Mm. That. That you know, all that not just the, not just that music, but the the urban music mm. that was that was kind of against the grain. It was yeah. like you know, it was expression of 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 London. L London, like I don't care till this day. I still say London. The best music has come out of London. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Look oh at God. all the genres that have been created. Yeah, out of yeah, London, yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah. Unprecedented levels. And the graph as well. Of course, I'm a bit yeah. biased, yeah, isn't yeah. it? But you see the style. I I can spot when I see graph. It's like boom. When, like when I see scan. Yeah. That is London. London. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Hundred percent. I see zonk. Boom. That is London. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And all of that. Like, yeah. It, you go to Europe, you see mad, mad styles. Yeah. You see all, you know, all different styles. I think it, it and I've thought, talked, gone through this a load of times, and, uh, you know, we, we do echo a, uh, an East Coast US flavour. Yeah. And that's because yeah. with all the craziness that goes on in a city, you just need to be re readable. Yeah. That's what yeah, it is. Yeah. You just, you just yeah. got to be readable. Yeah, yeah, big and bold, man. Yeah, I, I'm I'm known for them blockbusters. Yeah, T I C H. Come it's big on. and bold, man. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. If someone can read my letters, boom, there it is. Yeah. That's gonna stay in your mind. You know, you should smash it with blocks. Memo. Memo. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Big up, memo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah, man. Crazy. Yeah. Still heavy now. Yeah. Big blockbusters. Memo. Yeah. Memo. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Loads of loads of giants of the time, but you were uh, you moved on. You moved into uh, would I be right in saying spiritual healing? Yeah, so herbal remedies and such. Yeah, so I'm I'm a I'm I'm a I'm a herbalist. Yeah, as well, a training herbalist, if you like, and and you know have a knowledge of um, uh, understanding like what what things in nature can how they can help us to mm. to heal our bodies mm. and our minds and and everything, and everything that comes with it. And that's where I developed. Like you know when I. I moved away from 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 London and Graf. Um, you know, I started to treat people that were, you know, I'd come out of of this of this this heavy kind of you know energy that I was holding, mm. and I became lighter, and I, and I understood how I did that, and that was through, you know, like I said, going to these places that were peaceful and starting to turn inwards and understand <clears throat> why I do the things I do, mm -mm. where they're coming from, mm. and then I came to accept why I did the things I did. Mm which was really painful. And, and I think that's where a lot of people fall into these addictions. And graphic is one of those. It could be, could be considered a healthy addiction, but it's still an addiction if you're doing it, you're going out every week painting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like, like gym would be, yeah. Like that. Just gym, yeah, 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 yeah. But just like, you know, alcohol and just like all these things, there's reasons why we do these things. And cool, yeah. I came to understand that, oh, actually, let me kind of sort my shit out. And... And through doing that, I was able to help others and see quite clearly with other people mm. what was holding them back or why they're, you know, dis distressed or why they're, they're constantly angry or why they're constantly, you know, unhappy or, or discontent. Um, so I came to learn a, a, quite a few modalities with my hands, just touching people. Mm. and came to, like, you know, facilitate healing within them and it will kickstart something just for them to be... Whoa. It's mad because, you know... I'm quite a personable person, so mm. when someone comes to see me, I'm non-judgmental. I've been I've been through shit. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, I'm, if, a, if if one of my boys or, or anybody that is male, for example, comes yeah. to see me, or even female as well, it's like um, I'm not going to judge that guy because I've done madness. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I don't. Whatever you got to say is cool. Yeah. It's that space where you can be you. Yeah. You know, and and, yeah. and I'm going to accept, and I'm not going to have an opinion on what you're telling me. I'm just no. going to come with that love. Non-judgmental. Non-judgmental. You've been there. You get it. Exactly. And what I'm going to do is just. Come with that love, hold that space of love. Um, can you read the signs and you know when in first meeting someone or not meeting someone for a long time, and you see them and you can kind of make a uh, an assessment. Can you tell if someone's in pain or what might they may need or? Yeah, that's my craft, man. Really, so that's, that's it in a nutshell. That's my craft. So yeah. you can f engage with someone and within the first like. Blink of an eye, you know that I can tell by what they're saying, how they're speaking. I'm not looking, at, I'm not listening to the words. I am listening to words, but I'm listening to where those words are coming from. Wow. You know, so I'm listening to uh, where, where's what place is this person coming from? Is it coming from fear or is it coming from love? Those mm. are the two things you break it down. With. Wow. And that's how I'm, I'm able to pick that up quite, quite really, quite easily. <gasps> Over the years, I've developed that craft. 
You know, so when I'm sitting with... How long have you been watching a podcast for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been clock tails. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah dude. Like, that's my craft. And, uh, that's you know, incredible. I've spent time over... I've learned with healers and, uh, you know, uh, all over the world, man. Yeah. I've been to the Amazon um, to study plants, study wow. the shamanic system. Hold things, on, yeah. talk to me about the Amazon. Now, this is a conversation. Yeah, yeah, talk yeah, to yeah, me yeah. about the Amazon. Um, was there a lot of uh, animals and insects and oh. t lions, tigers, bears? Yes, mate. There really? Is, the, the, the jungle's alive, man. Whoa, the jungle is alive, that's man. That's been incredible. Yeah, the jungle's alive. Did you see man. some colourful birds, you know, the ones that do those sexy dances? T toucans. And, yeah, yeah, I've seen, I've seen, wow, seen them. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean... My, that journey has taken me all over the place. All over the place, man. Learning from people that are working with all the modalities of, of healing. So the tribes and things? The tribes, yeah. Dude. Tribal ways. What was it like? What was it like? What was it like meeting tribes? Well, it was, so they're semi-indigenous where I went. Yeah. So it wasn't fully indigenous. So you still have their cell phones and shit? Everywhere does, that. Yeah, man. that's true. Everywhere yeah. does, you know what I mean? But, but they still held on to their tradition of, yeah. of, of healing that's passed down through their generations. Wow. You know, which is being lost now, sadly, because... Of modern world, isn't modern it? Modern world, yeah. just happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah How man. big is... I mean, the Amazon's huge. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, they talk about knocking down trees. I'm like, fucking, where are you going to put the wood? There's a <laughs> lot of fucking trees <laughs> around yeah. there, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, man. It's massive. I went to uh, the Peruvian Amazon. Yeah. Uh, I went uh, on a couple of occasions. I went to Pacalpa, a place called Pacalpa, and Iquitos, and, and uh, worked with, you know, a lot of these plants that you hear about that which are quite popular, like ayahuasca and things like that. Yeah, that's I, wor I worked with a lot of those plants. Um, what was ayahuasca like? Well, I've, I've worked closely with those plants for the last 10 to 15 years, man. So what's it like? Well, you know, that's, that's, that, that's a hard question to answer because... Yeah, true, it's different for different people. It's different for different people, but it's, yeah. a, it's a... Well, I will say it's um, an incredible tool for transformation if, if it's respected and you respect the, the work that goes into it. Because Pandora's box, do mm. you want to open that box? Are you ready to open that box? Ooh, yeah, do you want like to do that true. healing? So you need the right support network yeah. and the right integration yeah. to, to do that work. You know? Shit, yeah, because we're the wrong people in the wrong company. Exactly, exactly, you know. So How do we get onto this, bro? Oh, love <laughs> bro this, is, this is exactly what podcast is about. <laughs> I fucking love these stories. Um, oh, yeah, and it's all, you know, it's all relative, isn't it? Because what you're talking about is things that all well, you lot could do is some healing. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your guy? Uh, seriously though, yeah, like man. it's you know you've got to you've got to have a life yeah, to yeah. to be able to get to where you are and 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 now you can kind of on reflection look at it in a different way. Yeah. Some people they they harbour guilt and um, resent you know. I say it quite a lot, but, you know, when people have experiences like, you know, getting their head electrocuted, there's yeah, some PTSD yeah, yeah. to that shit. Yeah, of course, of course. Life's for living, man. Yeah. Life's for living. And, like, you know, I, you know if, if shit is holding you back, it's okay to go through that shit, man, where people are, hold on to this stuff and they don't change and live their whole life with resentment and guilt and shame. And, and, and we all have an element of that, yeah? But, like... In a society, we're not encouraged to have these feelings, mm. especially as men. We're not encouraged to be guilty about things. We're not mm. encouraged, encouraged to have anger. Mm. We're not encouraged to have grief. Mm. These are natural human emotions that we should be experiencing in, a, in the right space, you know? So, you know, mm. these are valid emotions. And then what, what we do, we suppress them. So what that does, it suppresses us, and then we, it comes out in mad ways. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, it comes out in mad addictions, and we, 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 you know, we, t well, we do these addictive things to suppress. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, bro. <laughs> no, I'm genuine. I, I think one of the, you know, seriousness that the one of the core reasons why I want you to come on is for mm. these these sort of conversations. Yeah, you know? man. You know, yeah, the passing yeah, yeah. of teas and, you know, and you know that's a that you know that's that's that that business. But, you know, I, I think to myself, man, how many people out there could do with a conversation with someone like you? Do you yeah, know what I mean? Man. I'm happy, bro. I'm happy to converse with anybody. I swear, like anybody that met, hits me up and says, "Yo, Titch." Wagwan, like, yeah. I always kind of had the policy that, you know, like in f metaphorically speaking, it's like my door's always open. Mm. So what that means is like, if someone's going through shit or, or just needs to bounce off something mm. and, and have a perspective that from someone that's probably been through something similar, mm -mm. hit me up. Yeah, you know what see? I mean? And my, and my boys know this as well. Yeah. And people know this, like, do you know what I mean? I'm always there, man. That's yeah. one of those. That's Get what me. What talking about, bro. Yeah, man. Um, how do... You know, how do how do they um, how do people get in contact with you? So I've got like a small business. Uh, my, my thing is called Moksha Therapies, Moksha Holistic Therapies. How do you spell that? So M O M O K S H A yeah, underscore holistic 
underscore therapies. That's the Instagram anyway. Right, wicked. Uh, and uh, moxiaholistictherapies.com is the website. Um, so any of those channels, man, like mm. Instagram, hit me a message uh, through my website. My contact details are mm. there as well, contact form and all that kind of jazz, you mm. know what I mean? Um, I love it, man. You know, success is it's a beautiful thing and it's great to hear that you've gone on to yeah, yeah. B- bigger, broader pastures. I'm content, man. I'm content. And you know, like those days when I was doing the graph, I weren't. Mm. I was I was in turmoil mm. and that's why I was doing the graph because mm. it was a way for... And thank God for it as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm not seeing that as negative. It's not negative at all because mm. I love the fucking work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the craft. I love the art and I, love, I rate people that are still doing mm. it. You know what I mean? But... For me, it was just about moving away from that because, and now when I paint, like I've just done legally, it's actually, you know, I said at the start of this thing, I'm not, a, I'm not an artist, I'm a bomber. Mm. Actually, what I'm starting to realise now, I'm turn, starting to turn into more of an artist. <laughs> uh, get some in the end. Sorry, sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck's Tim talking about, man? Yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? What does Mumsy think now? Oh, yeah, well, she's proud, man. Yeah, because she wasn't too happy on that documentary, <laughs> but <laughs> She was like, here he is, go and get him. She was like, do you know what? She, she hyped me up. She was like... <laughs> yeah, totally. She was like, you knew you were going to get caught. Why didn't you stop? I was yeah. like, did, 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 what? She said the camera as well. <laughs> that was the one. And I was telling saying. my mum as well, I was going to my boy's house yeah. to paint a bicycle. And she was like, what? You told me you were painting a bicycle last night. I was like, no, I was out, I was out painting a blockbuster, mum, you know? <laughs> so G. Brush your teeth. You know what I mean? Fuck it. Painting man. a bicycle. <laughs> Jeez. See, this is where the art thing comes into. Yeah, man. Yeah, my yeah. brother, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you yes, so man. much for passing yeah, through. Man. Come on. <laughs> yes, bro. More archi- archivistic moves from the Killer Kill podcast. Thank you so much, my brother. <laughs> um, you, anyone you want to shout out, by the way? Well, all person? of them, man. Like, Go on. TRC, right, all my boys, HTB. Mm. Like I said, the boys I've been painting with, Boff, mm. Task. We got Boff, Task. Sema, you know, he's, he's my boy, man. Uh-huh. Uh, Nums, Pops, Ars, Yo. you know. You know, there's a lot, got, there's a got, lot, got, there's a lot of women coming up as well in this grafting as well. Uh, Bizu, Ling, you know, these yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, that, that's, that's one of the positives I'll say about this new wave of graft, mm. is that it's people that are, are expressing their artistic talent on a lot of these legal walls. Yeah, that's right. And it's a positive thing, it's actually connecting yeah. It is connecting people. Absolutely. And maybe it starts to these old school, you know, trains, yeah. <laughs> ways of thinking that we, maybe we need to change a little bit and, yeah. and, and ease up a little bit. Who knows? But, you know, I've still got love for the train riding, you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of it out there. Yeah, man. Could have got a podcast out like it was out of fashion, all right? Crime don't pay, but neither do they. All right? You stay lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Easy! Exactly. <laughs> that was good. You like that? That was all right. Yeah. That was all right.